Good, hello. Thanks for watching another Sunday case study. I am Pisces Palms, the online palmistry reader, reading the hands of high profile celebrities every Sunday. This just in, someone commented not long ago. Could you please do a reading on Neil deGrasse Tyson for a Sunday night case study? I like that Sunday night case study. Uh, this one's for you, Master Wingman. Say, I was pleasantly surprised as to just how easy it was to find images of his hands. He's clearly got nothing to hide. And I think he's pretty genuine. What you see is what you get. This image is easily the best one I have of his left hand. Um, now, initially, when I looked at his hands, I thought, well, what I was expecting to see was someone who was philosophic or analytical, maybe a mixture of both. But actually, I see a combination of practical and analytical bit more practical than analytical. If you want to know what I mean by these hand types, please do look at my website or watch my video on my 12 hand types. So I have already looked at his hands this morning. I've taken a few notes um, and I've discovered a couple of things, a couple of really interesting facts. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about his personality and what we can see in his hand shape. And then I'm going to start digging into the more complex information in the lines in his hands. And uh, and what we can see uh, in particular in this left hand image here and one of the really interesting uh, features is this marriage line here and the fact that it reaches across his palm and influences his sun lines and we've got quite a sort of complex formation uh, going on here so i'm going to really break down what this thing uh, what i think this means what well, I'm quite sure uh, what this means. And it's quite a unique feature. And you can find out, um, I did actually break down what this means in another video on um, 16 examples of uh, marriage lines in palmistry. So again, have a look at that if you want to find out a bit more. But then there's also another really interesting feature about his hands. Um, and that is pertaining to this just here. It's like a little island. And there's some influence here that crosses over this. And and we see here uh, something of a travel line as well. And they both point to the lifeline at the same time where the um, actually the roots of success begin, or at least his feelings about how he is successful. And it all sort of it all kind of ties together. So I'm going to explain what this means. Uh, at the end of this video and I'm I'm really actually excited about what I can say here because it's not very often I get an image with this clarity for one of these Sunday case studies. Uh, normally I can only really provide clarity with clarity so these these kind of um, readings I don't really have a, a great deal of uh, accuracy. I can I can make suggestions or, or summarize or predict but not to not any kind of great detail. Um, whereas in readings where people send me images on their phones, you know, using their phones, well, that's a different story. I can say a great deal more. I can be more specific. So the practical and analytical hand type combination is fairly self-explanatory. His hand is unmistakably rectangular, which provides a sense of logic and order um security structure there's a certain sort of um well practicality about the way in which he goes about his work and and just his sort of personality everything has a function but it's not as though these edges are hard and angular there's certainly a rounded softness to this approach as well as the fingers themselves unmistakably uh, soft and rounded. I mean, there is something of a spatulate nature of Saturn and Apollo, um, but there, there's a, a rounded edge to, to everything, and that creates um, extra creativity as well as a more sort of personal approach. The fingers in all the images fan outwards uh, in an attempt to understand and explore, to reach out. And the fact that they're rounded at the same time creates this, he's doing it with personality. He's doing it with this kind of vibrancy, creativity, spontaneity. What you can see, and you can't really see it so much in this image here, it's, it's very subtle, very subtle, but the top of his palm is ever so slightly wider than the base, and this image is somewhat distorted because it kind of enhances that feature. 
And what this really means is he's his mental, this is the mental plane, and his emotional plane are enlarged and have so slightly enhanced the capacity to um, think and to strive towards academic pursuits as well as uh, build uh, loving relationships to love and be loved. The, this area of him is, is quite strong, more so in fact with his um, ability to build and form loving relationships. So that I found quite interesting because most people in academia are often quite sort of stiff and rigid and cold and logical, um, and they don't really have as much uh, of uh, to make up for almost their their great capacity of thinking and, and, and logic. They don't quite have that also that same capacity to love, but this man does. Now, at first, when I looked at his fingers, I thought, wow, Jupiter is very long. It's almost, it's nearly as long as Saturn. but then having looked at a few other images, uh, and this really is the benefit of having a frame of reference, you can see that the Jupiter finger isn't, um, you know, near to equal length as Saturn. Uh, if that were the case, he would have a superiority complex and likely be something of a tyrant. Um, but that's not the case. What we do see here, however, is a strong sense of the developed self. There is something of a dominant personality. Um, there's something of a need to control. Um, that's often the case with people in science. Being an astrophysicist, it's important to have um, the facts right. If we, if we're, you know, our careers are on the line, really, we need to know. Uh, and so there's a sense of control here in terms of getting things right. Um, the basal phalanx of Jupiter is wide. And I feel this is probably um, a sign that he's indulgent and he's probably a big foodie, probably loves his food. I would think also sex as well. I think probably the pleasures in life are probably quite um, in meaningful to him. I also note the well-developed, almost kind of protruding tip of Jupiter here. Um, and you see the same thing on, I mean, all the tips of the fingers are well developed. And uh, really, what this shows is, I mean, in particular, Jupiter, though, overall, what this shows is, is a distinctive need to understand and receive um, a, a specific kind of hunger for knowledge, a thirst for knowledge. And that's what this shows us. You always see this on the hands of people who are striving to learn. But in particular, with Jupiter, this, I, I would say this is um, an increased need to understand all things spiritual, religious, and cosmic, higher meanings to things. This is a, a need to understand the universe around them. And, and I think this is in part related to his perspective of himself as well, and how he, where and how he fits in with all of this. But the Jupiter finger is long, it's strong, it's straight. Um, it's not leaning towards the thumb, though. It's leaning towards Saturn. And Saturn is also very strong and straight. And of the two of these um, aspects of his psyche, all things Jupiterian and Saturnian, he's certainly at his strongest. And, and these core values are at his strongest. So his idea of himself, ambition, ego, authority, uh, judgment, decision making, these aspects are strong, oh, probably more so Saturn out of the two. And these are the two strongest aspects of him. So his traditional values, his, his sense of right and wrong, home, community, security, respect, societal contribution, planning, these, these aspects of himself are also very strong and hold him upright. And even his sense of self is leaning towards these sort of qualities and perspectives. Um, and there's quite a sort of straightforward and sort of a slightly more rigid uh, perspective on things when it comes to these uh, these values. He's unshifting in this way. And that, I have to say, is a very practical hand trait. Uh, practical hands are firm and but fair. So they're, they're very rooted and grounded in logic and structure and law and order. So the law and order of his 
himself and and the way that he fits in with everything in the world the universe around him uh there's there's a strong idea of all of this as well he feels very strongly about about uh traditional values and society as well as how we fit in with with the bigger part of everything as well what our contribution is not to just the world but the universe as well and and our understanding of exploring that and, and reaching out i think exploration with him is as a strong need here because as i say in all of the images his fingers are far reaching and fanning outwards in this kind of attempt to understand and, and learn so his in terms of contribution which is strong within this this sort of connects with that now his thumb is low set a sign of a book lover and a humanitarian but of both sometimes it is also very long and you can see here that the phalanx of logic is longer than will only just but it is longer here he, he has uh, obviously he's highly logical he's got a great capacity to understand in very sort of scientific terms um but the other thing is notice on the right hand it flexes at the will phalanx the thumb itself is flexible and adaptable in terms of his um opinions and what he knows the, the current knowledge that he has is always open to the possibility of change and really you know this adaptability this fluidity flexibility of logic shows us his creative thinking his creative mind and his ability to challenge his own ideas and this actually is at the very essence of um scientific thinking i find it curious we see this on the right hand not on the left i mean it's not to say that his left hand thumb is not flexible too i just don't have an image that shows this if this is more flexible on the right then this would show that in his working life he is uh, he needs to be flexible in terms of his logic which would make sense so i'm going to move on to the more complex information in the palms now the the palmer lines here and now that we've kind of gone through the chirognomy aspect we can take those things into account um put them on our kind of cork board um with red string all attached to them and take them into account now when we when we look through and filter through this more complex palmer information and one of the first things i'm going to mention here is the headline notice how it's joined to the lifeline for a significant amount of time probably about the age of 24 i would say you know where we see the life and the headline joined for such a period of time where we see it kind of break away the lifeline pull away from the headline is the time in a person's life where they claim their own independence now when a person has a completely separate head and lifeline um that shows they're they're already independent they're already an independent thinker so this really shows us a kind of cautious um methodical thinking uh someone someone who is rooted and grounded in um the material the practical which again is a very you know um, common trait of the practical hand but it shows us someone who is um they're not going to step outside of the unknown without good reason or a safety net and this the length of time that this head and lifeline is combined for shows uh, over cautiousness and probably a lack of confidence when he was young and i feel that the fact that we don't see a kind of a gentle breaking away we see a sharp fast kind of almost dramatic turn you know i feel like there's there was a point in his in his life where he just sort of had this epiphany and and broke through the walls of low self-esteem and, and found his confidence um and and that confidence is illustrated by the length of that jupiter finger we we see a long jupiter finger so therefore we see 
a good amount of confidence, a strong ego, a strong sense of self-worth. And with this extra length of Mercury, not only do we see that capacity to learn, but also to express and communicate who we are and our thoughts and our opinions as well. So what I find really interesting about this headline is that it kind of, it's very logical. It's very sort of uh, straight forwards in this uh, approach to uh, tackling mental, um, you know, academic problems. And then all of a sudden it, it sharply plunges into healthy uh, depth of Luna. It's not too low down and it's not, um, it's not high up. So what this really shows is this arc here. It's almost, again, he's had this second epiphany at the age of maybe 35 or so. Everything changed for this person and their outlook, their mental outlook on how they see not just the world, but the universe. And he's reaching towards Luna, his place of imagination, uh, a far reaching. He, he's looking into uh, the abstract and he's reaching into the unknown, which is, you know, very different to this early life. Uh, way of thinking. He's he's a completely different person to that of who, who he used to be when he was a lot younger. So this curvature of the headline is a creative sign, and it expands the distance between the head and the heart line. And what this shows us is that he has, not only is he highly ambitious, as seen by the uh, great expanse of, you know, the Jupiter Mount, but the expanse here is seen between the head and the heart line shows an open mind. Again, we've already seen this in the second phalanx of the thumb here. But this really shows us that he is broadening his mind, his horizons, and again, his um, ability to be challenged on what uh, is currently known. The curvature of the headline, as I say, it's flexibility of a way of thinking. It's a creative sign in, in a person's way of thinking. The headline covers more ground as it reaches its destination, showing a, a, a more kind of variety, uh, a more holistic way of thinking. It's, it's creative, it's adaptive, it's fluid, fluidity of logic. And this fluidity of logic is developed. As I say, he's had, I believe, two kind of massive epiphanies in life one when he was about 24 and the other perhaps at 35. now the heart line is a really interesting feature in that it's very low down on the hand which shows that he is probably susceptible to a sob story he has a an open and warm uh, heart he's got a lot of love to give from the offset and it's again a lot like the headline. It's relatively straight until all of a sudden it kind of plunges upwards towards um, in between Saturn and Jupiter. And what this shows us is that not only was he brought up with a, a decent sense of right and wrong, a good moral compass, he probably was brought up by two uh, loving parents, but it also shows us that he has a strong capacity to love and be loved. And so I think there's quite a lot to this person's personality and their character, who they are as a makeup. They're quite complicated and not your typical um, academic, not your typical astrophysicist. I think this is probably quite a sensitive soul and a loving individual. And what I also notice is this cross on the Jupiter Mount here. And, and this is one of the signs of probably what it mostly represents, most accurately represents, is um, a strong and loving, faithful, committed, um, long-lasting relationship, marriage. So his lifeline is a really interesting feature because it's not so much the same on the left hand, at least I can't really get as much of a read on it. The right hand shows quite a different story. There is something of a neat curvature to it. But for the longest time, it appears, you know, very straight. And this shows us this kind of um, straightforwards 
sort of destination. This is where I'm going. This is where I'm heading. He's got a good idea of this. Again, ambitious, you know, Jupiterian quality of the self. He knows where he's going. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he, where his aim, his aims are. The lifeline is somewhat kind of. It's sort of a bit more narrow than I was expecting to see from someone with such a, a degree of charisma and personality, especially in the way that they kind of come across and. And so I feel that he is probably has a fairly reduced social network. I think he's probably happy with you know a few select friends uh, and likes to in, enjoy his personal life in in the company of of those he's closest to and and those alone. Now, one really interesting feature coming from the lifeline here on the right hand. So this is a more sort of practical, environmental, and physical um, change and achievement. We notice here a line rising from the lifeline, I would say a probably late 40s, and it reaches right up to Apollo. So the application of his talents has enabled achievement and success. It's um, a real feeling of satisfaction and happiness at this time. I'm wondering if at this time he met his wife. I don't know the exact scenarios there, but from other things that I've seen in his hand, his wife is a direct, um, with a direct impact on his success. At least those, uh, these are his thoughts and feelings. And I've seen that in this here, which is what I'm going to get to next. Now, what I was saying earlier about the um, that epiphany at the age of 35, the left hand shows us what's internal. And we can see clearly on the left hand here, there is something of an influence something of a connection from the way in which they how they um live their life their way that they think about their life and their environment and it's connected to the headline and there's a a, a massive sort of junction here at the age of 35 this, and it creates this sort of star formation out of um, the convergence of these uh, major and minor lines it's not a star but it creates that formation where we see the fate line cross and and this uh, growth this explosion and expansion in success and achievement at this time so there was this uh, with this epiphany all things kind of followed uh, for this person at this time and, and really sort of um, kicked off a, a new kind of lease of life as well as a, a newfound kind of feeling of success and happiness at this time in his life and again, we see that at about the age of 40 with a line kind of pointing, hinting at um, you know, success, happiness, achievement, money. And this is an effort line. So I'm going to come now to actually one of the most interesting things that I've seen in his hand. And that is this line just here, his marriage line on his left hand. Now, again, the left hand shows us what's internal, his thoughts and feelings about his marriage. Now, this type of marriage line this formation of a marriage line shows us that his feelings about his success and here we see two sun lines here's one and here's another these are two potential income streams but being the left hand it's more around the satisfaction and happiness that these brings the feelings of success uh, that these bring now the fact that the marriage line looks to um you could interpret this as the marriage line is striking at these, but notice how and this is all interpretation. This is a key role of the palmist now. It's not just about knowledge, it's about intuition as well as interpretation. Notice that the sun line is stronger after the time of which this marriage line impacts these sun lines. And notice the change in direction as well. This person is impacted internally their feelings of success and fulfillment are you know detrimental they are nothing without their partner their feelings of success their achievement and their happiness i wouldn't say this person depends on their partner but it's certainly one of the signs of someone who is married to a wealthy or and or famous individual and has helped elevate their own status in life through this union. Being on the left hand, I'm not certain about the right because I just don't have the clarity in the right hand image. 
Um, but being on the left, it's actually more important we see this on the left because it really shows us his feelings about his partner. And again, with everything else that we've seen here, with you know the extra uh, width at the top of the, the palm, the broad top palm that I mentioned earlier on, we're connecting these dots now on our cork board with our red bits of string because this shows us that it's another sign that we can conclude from and more accurately say, well, this is a sign that he is deeply in love and that his feelings of his relationship um, are incredibly profound. And, you know, being a practical hand as well, he is undoubtedly loyal to this person. I think this connection here as well with this secondary sort of sun line um, and the roots of, you know, we can see the fate line here um, creating a route towards this and it's all connected with this marriage line. We, we, what we really see here is this is a sign of success through a union. Um, this triangle here that develops on the heart line shows um, uh, prosperity through uh, that loving union and so it, it's possibly um buying a house with a partner and um and the th the feeling of fulfillment that of which you know he's gained from that um and how that's that um has now enabled uh, more freedom of expression with it sort of turning more towards mercury it's more um happiness rather than just sort of straight forwards uh, monetary uh, monetary gain. So I felt that, you know, this was a really interesting uh, feature and a really positive sign and not something that you see all that often, especially in one of my Sunday case studies. Now I'm going to move on to the fate line. It's a really interesting um, line in his hand because it comes from Luna on his right hand, kind of hints at Pluto on his right hand. Um, and it strives towards uh, Saturn, and it's not a straightforward career, a career line or a fate line that stems from Luna or Pluto, which I find ironic being an astrophysicist, is always someone who is looking for a career in the limelight, um, and as such we place our careers, our destiny, in the hands of our audience and so our fortune like the moon waxes and wanes and so it's i find it really interesting that on the left hand here notice the fate line here it is and you can see its roots stem from luna very low down on luna almost pluto and so, you know, this is potentially a sign that he has kind of come back with unfinished business from a past life. He's he's so ambitious. He's got so much to to learn and to to give, um, to explore and explain that he is sort of on this mission um, that is as a result of having not been able to fulfill these um, destiny from a past life. Now check out the Mercury line. On the right hand here, what we see here is the strength of it up here. And so what we know is that we can read it in this direction, reading it down because the Mercury line is kind of interchangeable in that way. You have to look at where the strength is of the line in order to um, you know, read where it's coming from. So this indicates the fact that it strikes at the lifeline at this time indicates a potential health issue at this time in his life which is probably, I would say, late 60s, maybe early 70s. We don't see nearly the same thing on the left hand. So what this tells us is this is purely physical. And what I have seen here, and this is a really another really interesting uh, feature, um, is this little, uh, sometimes referred to as a sort of a friendship line, the vertical lines that rise upwards, um, and it's sort of forming this kind of island here. And what we also see is coming from almost the yeah, family ring area, this influence that is, is cutting across and almost kind of, um, you know, deeply in connection with this island on this 
sometimes referred to as a love line. And it strikes at the lifeline, at the age of which um, success kind of is rooted in. And for me, this is really interesting because I'm going to connect the dots here a little bit and intuitively notice how you've got this effect from the cosmos coming in and over. And it's looking to influence at exactly the same time. So what we see here is an event completely outside of his control. It's it's cosmic, you know, it's the planetary alignments, if you like. This this is not something that anyone can have any kind of power over. This is outside of his control. And what I believe this is is either the loss of his wife this time in his life, which is mid to late sixties, not far away for him. Um, I would say late sixties potentially, um, and it's possible that he could have a health issue arise at this time as well because of you know a deep um, hurt. This this the the mental. Um, the the emotional hits could have a knock on effect on his physical health at this time, but it's possible that he loses his partner at this time. I don't know. I hope I'm wrong about that. However, this health issue here is not. I don't think it's connected. I can't really be all that accurate because this isn't all that accurate. It could be. It could be that this is connected actually. He's probably going to have some health issues around this time, not long after he loses a very close friend, if not his wife, late 60s. But I do believe that he will live to a healthy age. Can't be completely certain about that. Uh, because it's in the right hand that I would... I need both hands, really, for that. And I'm not really going to um, get into all that, because then I have to explain how and why and... And that really is very powerful information. And with great power comes great responsibility. So, you know, palmistry is a healing practice. And really, we should only be using it for good. So in a personal private reading, if I were to see something like the potential of a loss of a close friend or um, a partner, I would advise a person to take time off work at this time spend as much time as possible with their partner at this time and just to really make the most of what they have i mean it's it sort of feels like a lot of the time the best advice you can give is is often kind of no-brainer advice you know the same advice that a doctor might provide or you know that that kind of go-to cliche sort of advice but actually it is you know you just can't say it any other way at times um and frustratingly for the palmist sometimes that advice is just sort of disregarded or just not heard because it's just so obvious almost um, without sort of, you know, pointing out something that's potentially harmful and just trying to provide um, a solution um, and just be helpful. It's one of the many challenges, actually, of being the palmist. You know, what I do see is overall a great many happy years and um i feel you know he is making the most of his life and uh, his loving relationship and he will have a great many positive years ahead of him so let me know your thoughts on this palm reading i'm really keen to know what everyone's thoughts are perhaps you've learned a few things um maybe you've got a question about what you've seen in his hands and i've not brought this up you know just anything far away i'm happy to comment i'm happy to answer anyone's questions and if you've got a question about your own palm if you'd like a palm reading with me please do book on my website please do like and subscribe thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next sunday for another sunday night case study